Welcome to Ghostly. Welcome to Ghostly. Are doppelgangers paranormal? Ghostly is a podcast that comes out every other week. In each episode, we take a ghost story or paranormal event, which this one is going to be a paranormal activity or something. Sure. But then we look into its complete history. Rebecca then gives us evidence proving that the story is real. And my job is to debate those pieces of evidence and get you, the listener, prepared to vote on if it's real or not. If you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. And as always, we're your host, and I'm Pat. And I'm Rebecca. All right, so in today's episode, we're going to be talking about something, a phenomenon. There you go. I like that word. Called doppelgangers. Doppelganger. Yeah, so I I had asked you before we started doing a bunch of research mm-hmm. if you were a believer in this, if you thought it could be paranormal-based, mm-hmm. and you said you did. I think it could be, yeah. yeah. Like, to me, I just think it's... You know, someone just happens to look like somebody. Well, maybe for uh, reasons, but maybe not reasons, you know. It's hard because I think there's a couple different situations. We've certainly had a lot of um, listener mail yes. that talks about somebody seeing somebody and then it's not that person. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, I think there's there's some there's something to explore for okay. sure. All right. Well, we are going to do that. Uh, this would be the part where we do shout outs, but there are no shout outs today. There's two ways to get a shout out. Leave us a review on Apple Podcast. Or you could become a member on Patreon. Uh, if you want to become a member on Patreon, go to ghostlypodcast.com and click on Patreon in the menu bar. We have a lot of different tiers in there. Um, and we might be changing things up after uh, October 31st. Yeah, which is going to be a big day for us that you will learn more about coming soon. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but um, but you shouldn't wait if you want to join Patreon, no, of course. There's like 30 episodes you can listen to. We we just got done doing our Secret Society episodes, which was super cool to research what a secret society is and mm-hmm. over five major ones. And I will say this most recent one was one I had never heard of. Yeah. And yet they're everywhere. Oh. I mean, I'm not lying. Like, it's just, it's, it was really weird. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, we talk about ghosty stuff too, but that, our most recent one was that. And, uh, anyways, we have a lot of fun over there yeah, and we, uh, we hope you check it out. Yeah. So, I do have a listener mail. Oh, great. Um, this is actually, uh, just came in. Okay. Um, like, hot off so the ago. presses. Hot off the presses from a listener named David. Okay. Thank you, David. Yep. And it's a short one. Uh, he, he starts with <laughs> Shortly after my father in law passed away, I awoke one night to see him sitting at the end of our bed, mm. gazing at my sleeping wife. As soon as I saw him, he just disappeared into a black mist that quickly faded away. The next day, I was talking to her as she was showering. And when I mentioned his name to her, everything fell off both shelves in the shower. I'm sure it was him visiting. Wow. Super creepy. Yeah, that is very interesting. Uh, well, thank you, David. Yeah. Again, we really appreciate it. Uh, we need more stories. Yes, we do. And if uh, you want us to read your story out, out loud on here, you could even you know say, don't say my name if sure. you wanted to. But you could email us at info at ghostlypodcast.com. Or use the contact us form on ghostlypodcast.com. It's really easy. You just click on contact us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and one of our favorite ways is to get ghost stories in the actual mail at P.O. Box number 264. That's in Geneva, Illinois, 60134. As always, you're not going to remember all that. So just go to ghostlypodcast.com, scroll to the footer, and there's the address right there. Absolutely. Got all that information yeah. for you. And I'm just going to make a note. That story... That's not a doppelganger because this is somebody who yes. was passed, right? Yes. So there's the doppelganger is a little different. We're going to talk about what it is, but it's not that. Yeah. Well, you were saying that <laughs> it might be some kind of time slip thing. Like we did that mm-hmm. episode on time slips. Yep. I think a parallel dimension. Okay. There's lots of, lots of options out there. Um, but uh, no skipping the polls. I can oh. tell you're trying to do that. Um, Rebecca. <laughs> no. We, in our last episode, we talked about, um, okay. 
Paviglia Island. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. Uh, in Italy. Um, all right. Yes, 44.4. And no, 55.6. Wow. So that's kind of interesting, though. I mean, I don't know. It's it's a big difference, but also I feel like not. Well, I think it's kind of close. I mean, I will say that most of the comments that, that came in, on that, and if you ever want to hear the comments, we read them in Ghostly X, too, yes. by the way. Anyways, most of the comments that came in just said that there's just not enough evidence. And I, I agree. You know, it could mm-hmm. be something there, but there's just not enough to support it. Yeah. Um, but overall rating, 6.44. They, yeah, that seems like a yes to me. I don't... I'm well, really... they're like, no, but we want it to be, you know, right. kind of thing. So yeah. it's like, no, but it's a six. <laughs> like, I <don't, laughs> so I'm going to call it a mixed vote. Sure. On okay. That one. All, right. <laughs> All right. So let's listen to a ghost story. All right. Or a doppelganger story. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one Sunday morning, my brother and I were watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on TV, and someone came and knocked on the door. We lived in an apartment that was empty. The owner hadn't rented the second floor. It was a two-story apartment with a kitchen and a bathroom by the door. A small apartment, but with a big window that faces out to the door. So when I heard someone knock, I checked the window, and I saw my father. So I thought. I was going to the door to open it. When I was going to unlock the door, my mom pulled me away and screamed at me not to open the door because I didn't know who it was. Makes sense. I told her, it's dad. He's out there. She freaked out, going to the window and checking and then checking the peephole. She started to get terrified and she said she had to go to the farthest room in the apartment and not to come out. She went and woke up my dad and my dad got angry and confused. We told him what we saw and the man was still knocking at the door. My dad screamed, who is it? No answer. He said, I'm going to call the cops, but no response. While my dad was busy screaming at him, we saw that he was just still standing there in front of the door. So my mom took us to the furthest room from the door while my dad got ready to open it with a metal bat in hand. Once he did, the man was gone. My dad goes out looking everywhere, looking everywhere around the apartment. The apartment door was a heavy metal door. And always we heard when someone was, comes in and out. But we heard nothing that morning and nothing when my dad opened the door. We heard no footsteps. But my brother, my mother, and I saw that man. And he looked exactly like our father. All right, Rebecca. So is this based on any factual story or anything? This is actually based on a story that I read on okay. Reddit. Wow. All right. So I I mean, there's a lot of stories like this. This yes. one was probably one of the scarier ones that I read. But, um, but there's a lot. Like I said, we've gotten a lot of these too where it's like I was at home and I swore i saw my mom go into the bathroom and then she came home you know and it was like but this one was really freaky for me just to like that someone's knocking at the door like that i mean my thing is is that i don't doubt that there are people that look like people right you know so that is not where it's so when we're talking about stuff like i have to be proven it has to be proven to me to feel comfortable voting higher Mm -hmm. that it is paranormal based and that's really hard to do Mm -hmm. so i don't know if it's possible but we're going to get into it. We're going to do the history mm-hmm. right after this, and then we will get to the debate after that. Sounds good. Pat, what do creepy stories, funny ghost memes, and inside ghostly information have in common? Um, My life. <laughs> well, yes, but no, <laughs> it's also Ghostly Society on Facebook. Oh, yeah, I mean, that too, of course. I, but aren't all ghostly listeners in Ghostly Society? Not yet. What? I mean, that means that they're missing out on all my jokes. Yeah, they are. And missing out on chatting and sharing with other listeners and us, of course. We love talking to our listeners. If you haven't yet, you should consider joining our private group on Facebook called Ghostly Society. Let's hope now they will. 
Unless they're a woman in white. Uh-oh. Pets. Facts. From a skeptic point of view. Pets. Facts. The Pet Facts are sponsored by Tarot by Ta. Ta is a professional tarot card reader with over 20 years of experience. He reads at numerous public events, private parties, and personal appointments throughout the greater Chicagoland area. He also does his readings worldwide using online services like Zoom. And the best part is he's hashtag Team Skeptic. Uh, I just saw one of his posts, <laughs> and he said that he broke his record for doing the most readings at an event. I can't, And his record was pretty high, I yeah. think. And he does a lot of events, too. So, yeah. I mean, that that's crazy. But if you want to find out more about Ta, visit and like his uh, Facebook page at facebook.com slash tarot by Ta. All right. All right. So let's just get into the Pat Facts. Pat Facts. <laughs> So some episodes are made for history, right? So mm-hmm. when we do a presidential person or when we do like a place that's been around for a long or time. A prison or something. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah. There's just tons of history. Doppelgangers, there's not much history, right? Because it's a... It, it's a uh, it, an it's, idea. It's an idea. It's a concept. Yeah. Right. So doppelganger is a German word, which means uh, double walker. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. A double walker is a biologically unrelated lookalike or a double of a living person. Mm -hmm. So in our evidence thing, um, a lot of those could be biologically related and therefore not at all doppelganger. Oh, like a twin. Yeah, twin. Like 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 your physical biological twin is not a doppelganger. Yes, exactly. Got it. Uh, so in fiction and mythology, a doppelganger is often portrayed as a ghostly or paranormal. Ding, ding, ding phenomenon and usually seen as a harbinger of bad luck Mm -hmm. Uh, other traditions and stories equate a doppelganger with an evil twin and in modern times the term twin stranger is occasionally used you ever heard that twin twin stranger no like Mm. it's like it's like meaning like um like there's someone else in the world that looks very much like you, but they're not your actual twin or a stranger to you. That's what they, yeah, that's kind of the term okay. that they refer to him as. Gotcha. The first known use uh, in the slightly different form of doppelganger occurs in the novel Seizenbizgas. Okay, um, that sounds good. <laughs> in 1796 by Jean Paul, mm-hmm. in which uh, he explains his newly coined word in, in a footnote. The word doppelganger also appears in the novel, but with a different meaning. Okay. So English speakers have only recently applied this German word to a paranormal concept. Mm. Uh, with the invention of social media, there have been social, or excuse me, there's been several reported cases of people finding their twin stranger on online. Oh. Imagine going to Facebook and you're like, oh my God, there's someone that looks just like me. Oh, weird. Well, people do it with um, famous people yeah. too, where they'll be like, you know, this uh, this this king from, you know, 200 years ago looks just like Michael Sarah. Yeah, yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. And, and, and for me, I mean, people are always like, he looks just like Fabio, you know? And, and I'm like, <laughs> I, I know I look like him. No, so. you look like Eddie Vedder. I do not look like Eddie Vedder. Uh, there are several websites where users can upload a photo of themselves and... Facial recognition software was going to attempt to oh, find their match. That sounds and, creepy. And uh, yeah, they found numerous living doppel- doppelgangers on on there. Wow. Again, not necessarily paranormal, right? Because no. you don't know that. But no. So um, hiatoscopy is a term used in psychiatry mm. and uh, neurology for hallucinations of seeing one's own body at a distance. Okay. Uh, it can occur as a symptom in schizophrenia mm-hmm. and epilepsy and is considered a possible explanation for doppelganger phenomenon. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So, um, so do you have anything to add to this? Yeah. The only thing I found that, I don't know, uh, it's a, is that it was part of like a, a Freudian psychoanalysis, okay. I guess. Um, it can be like a patient's attempt to deal with certain aspects of the mind and personality. Sure. So I thought that was kind of interesting that like, you know, um, it's viewed 
like like you're struggling to control yourself and it's like it's like a the double is like a way to um kind of show the other part of you right so yeah. it's like they they it's you but they're different they're more extreme i mean again i don't know but like so, you know it's like uh, the whole Freudian thing, right? Love with your mother, love with mm-hmm. your, you know, whatever. So it's kind of weird. Um, and then I just grabbed some stuff from folklore um, where they say they have no shadow or reflection, oh. um, kind of like vampires, um, that they're uh, they're often seen as malicious, like you said, like yeah. a harbinger of, of death or whatever. Um, and they can kind of haunt their innocent counterparts. Um, I mean, or th- at least that's in like storytelling right forms, this know, is folklore yeah. right exactly and they give bad advice yeah you know they put bad thoughts like almost well, if, if i talk to myself and mm-hmm. i gave myself bad bad luck <laughs> and bad advice that would be really weird wouldn't it yeah i don't know right I so I, well and like it's kind of like um like jekyll and hyde yeah you know is uh, but that like you know but they're two different forms it's just of, like of the that's same being the same person yeah. yeah um but there's actually i saw a painting too that someone there's like a famous painting that has like shows like doppelganger those like okay. like a couple and then it shows their their opposites hmm. um so the idea has been around a long time yeah but i mean now it's more referred to as hiatoscopy where you see yourself mm-hmm. so like the reports of like my friend saw someone that looked just like you that's not the hiatoscopy. Right. The hiatoscopy is seeing yourself. Right, right. Which I'm just going to say, I saw myself. Did you? Or someone that looked like me. Yeah. I mean, it's it's weird. It's like one of those things, it was just like a, like a second, right? And yet it sticks with you. Yeah. So I was driving home um, and it, like I said, it was just, it was the weirdest thing I've ever seen where like... I was at a light and a car was turning left uh-huh. and so it was like passing me and I looked and I was like, that's me. Were they in a better car than what you were driving? I don't even remember the oh, car. Okay. And this was like 25 years ago. Like this was wow. a while ago. Like, but it was, it felt out of body. It yeah. felt really weird. Yeah. And it was just like, oh my God. Oh my gosh. Like I just saw myself. I just saw myself. <laughs> like that yeah. was me. But yet nothing happened. You know what I mean? Like, sure. it wasn't like I never got in an accident in that, that spot. <laughs> like, I, you know, like nothing yeah. came it of it. It wasn't a harbinger of bad. Right. You know, it was just like a yeah. really weird thing that happened. And I don't know why my yeah. brain was like, I just saw myself. So I don't wow. know if that's, I, I'm not Theatos schizophrenic. Copy, yeah. I'm not, <laughs> that I know be, of. I mean, <laughs> it was so weird. schizophrenia is not just a, you know, definitive, um, um, diagnosis too there's levels of it too and there's you know you could be going through a rough time and you can have like an episode of schizophrenia too okay well i don't think i had that no i don't think so but But. my thought is if i saw myself would i recognize myself yeah in this case i did because in dreams and stuff like i don't look at all like what i look like of course i'm pretty buff in my (laughs) dreams you know but I mean, it's still like, I don't know if I would recognize myself. And yeah. if I did, I don't know if I'd like myself. So mm, Yeah, I don't know. It was, again, it was it was just a weird, weird thing. All right. So we're going to take a break. And when, when we return, we have a very special debate yes. with some twists and turns. Woo-hoo. Throughout our time doing Ghostly, we've met a lot of great people. People that don't always fit into our episode schedule. And even when they do, we try to focus on the topic of the episode and we don't really get a chance to get to know them as a person. That's why we came up with the idea of Ghostly X. Ghostly X will come out on the weeks when there is no regular Ghostly episode. And it'll have interviews with amazing people and listener feedback from previous episodes. We also can't wait to talk about the paranormal in the news. We're very proud of this project, and we can't wait to share it with you. Ghostly X is a Patreon exclusive. 
You can start listening now by going to ghostlypodcast.com and clicking on the Patreon link in the menu bar to become a patron and help support Ghostly by listening to our brand new show. Welcome back. It's time for a debate. It's time for a debate. <laughs> I don't know how this debate's going to go because yeah, I don't know. It's like I, I think that the burden of evidence for me is going to be way too high. And I don't think every anything is going to match up to that, unfortunately. And I'm not. that's not against you mm-hmm. or the concept or paranormal things in, in any form. Mm-hmm. It just to me, it's like there is a reasonable explanation for this. Someone just looks like you. you sure. Know? Maybe you share genes. Maybe, you know. Yeah. No, it's 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 different. Yeah. So I think what we're going to do is I'm going to give an example yeah. of something that is, a I think, a paranormal version of a doppelganger. And then we'll talk about it. Yeah. Uh, and then you'll give an example. Of something that's not. That's not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so we'll just kind of go back and forth. So yeah. Pat actually has evidence this time. Yeah. Well, kind of. <laughs> you know. It's not really evidence, but yeah. 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 So I just wanted to say like a definition, a paranormal definition I found is a doppelganger isn't someone who just resembles you, but is an exact double Yes, right down to the way you walk, act, talk and dress. A friend or even a close relative who encounters your doppelganger will swear it was you, even though you can't prove you were not in this. You can prove you were not in the same location as the double was cited. Yeah. So that's the thought. They might also share memories of yours, too. Sure. That's like the paranormal. So if like if that was the case. I would lean more towards believing than not because right. there's what do I dispute in that? Right. If this blob of whatever has your memories as well. Yeah. But often, because like oftentimes you'll see, like uh, this just happened actually uh, a couple of weeks ago. We were at an event and I saw someone that looked just like um, Shane, <laughs> Jacob oh, Mayfield's uh, yeah. partner. Um, and I was like, that looks, but it, but it wasn't him. Like you know what I mean. Like there was. But no it looked part like the Barbie me. version. It looked of him, like though. the Barbie version of him. It was really yeah. weird. If but Shane was a Ken. If Shane was a Ken, that would be him. Yeah. But it wasn't like I wasn't like it wasn't his doppelganger. Where Let's was, just say. Where that. was this at? This was at a demolition derby. What? Yes. Again, it was weird to see a Ken <laughs> at a demolition derby. It's weird that you're at a demolition derby. It's not. I love them. <laughs> okay. All right. So I am actually going to start with something that's a little different than okay, this, yeah, though. Yeah. Um. But it's like. It's one of the most famous stories okay. when it comes to doppelgangers, and it's about Abraham Lincoln. Mm. We love the presidents on this show. Yeah. Um, so Noah Brooks, in his book, Washington and Lincoln's Time, published in 1895, um, he says that soon after Lincoln was elected in 1860, he arrived home one day and looked into the bureau mirror where he saw himself reflected in double. Okay. Lincoln said... Quote, nearly at full length, but my face had two separate and distinct images. Lincoln noticed that although the images were nearly identical, one was, quote, a little paler, say five shades than the other. Five shades paler. Wow. Okay. His wife, we know. Yeah. (laughs) His wife. The whole episode. uh, His wife was said to have been very worried and told Lincoln she believed that the paleness of half of the dual image was a bad omen, which meant that Lincoln would serve his full first full term, but would not live to finish his second. Okay. Well, that's easy to say after the fact. I'm that I'm a little, I'm I'm not sure about that part, but I, anyways, it's interesting to think about. Well, yeah, the mirror see, part. I didn't think about that as far as doppelgangers go. So, but I mean, if it's just a mirror image, you just see it in the mirror. Maybe something was wrong with him or maybe something was wrong with the mirror. That's what my mm-hmm. thoughts would be. Um, you know, maybe there was something that caused this w- reflection of two instead of one. Um, and that doesn't sound really paranormal because although you do come up with the 
a prediction at the end. I don't believe this prediction. <laughs> I believe this is on uh, Noah Brooks talking, you know. And I don't know. It just seems that. weird that he's quoting Lincoln himself. So I don't yeah, know if yeah. Lincoln felt like he saw a double of himself in the mirror. Um, that like seems know. premonition-y. So I don't well, know. What's your rating of this one? Oh, jeez. One. A one. Oh, yeah. Okay. So zero, it's not paranormal at all. We'll say, right? And 10 is like fully paranormal, I guess. No, five to me would be like the middle ground, right? So when I okay. say zero, I'm going like <laughs> way below. That's okay. like a negative something if I could give that. Okay. One is just saying, I don't know. There's, it's odd and it's, it's I can't unprove it or anything like that. It just sounds highly sus because <laughs> it's a mirror yeah. and also because it was paler it could be like maybe the mirror was tilted in a way that it mm. had a reflection or something i don't know what it is but it's so i'm gonna give it a one so okay, okay. i'm gonna give it i'm gonna give it a five five okay you know okay. like i do think it's doppelganger ish it's not quite the same as seeing like a person yeah, yeah. you know um but i also think hey that was his regular mirror it wasn't like it looked like that regular normally so yeah. it's it seems a little odd Oh, okay, so mine are going to be a little bit different than yours. So yeah. again, I'm trying to prove that, you know, and you don't have to rate mine either. Okay. This is just thoughts. You thoughts. Know? Um, criminologist found a practical application in the concepts of facial familiarity and similarity due to the instances of wrongful conviction based on eye- eyewitness testimonies. Mm. You know, it happens all the time, right? Uh, in one case, a person spent 17 years behind bars persistently denying any involvement with the crime of which he was accused. And he was finally released after someone was found who shared a striking resemblance and the same first name. Wow. Yeah, so this was not a doppelganger, though, because it wasn't exactly the same. Yeah, but um, I, but, but people might have. But they yeah. obviously thought, you know. He I looked mean, enough like this person. Yeah, yeah they so confused them. Think about this, you know, you, um, you know, someone did something and you're in a lineup. You have to mm-hmm. pick out somebody. And this person looks exactly like what your mind tells you that yeah. that person looked like. But it wasn't that person. Wow. Well, that just tells me who we mm-hmm. should always have more evidence than just someone's word. Yeah. <laughs> you I, know what I mean? Like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but that's like, a, like it's okay to have that. But that's a pretty you, big one, though. Actually. It is. Yeah. But who? Yeah. yeah, I mean, you have to have physical evidence when it comes to those kind of things, though. Yeah. All right. So. All right. Okay. So my next piece of evidence yes. is something that I actually had read before. Okay. Um, and when I saw it, I was like, oh, yeah, this is it. This is Emile um, Sagi, I think, French. Okay. So I'm Emile? sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh. I don't know. Uh, one of the f- uh, most fascinating reports of a doppelganger comes uh, from uh, writer uh, Robert Dale Owen, who recounts the tale of a 32-year-old French woman named Emily, maybe, Sagi. Mm -hmm. She was a teacher at a um, pensionat van... Oh, no. (laughs) At an exclusive girls' school. We're just going to say that. An exclusive girls' school near uh, Volmar, in which uh, is now Latvia. Oh, okay. So, sorry. I thought it was French, but it's not. That's right. Latvia. Um, One day in 1845, while um, Sagi was writing on the blackboard, her exact double appeared beside her. The doppelganger precisely copied the teacher's every move as she wrote, except that it did not hold any chalk. (laughs) Thirteen students in the classroom witnessed the event. Wow. During the next year, Sagi's doppelganger was seen several times. The most astonishing instance of this took place in full view of the entire student body of 42 students on a summer day in 1846. As they sat at long tables working, they could see Sagi in the school's garden gathering flowers. When the teacher left the room to talk to the headmistress, Sagi's doppelganger appeared in her chair while the real Sagi could still be seen in the garden. Two girls approached the phantom and tried to touch it, but felt an odd resistance in the air surrounding it. The image slowly vanished. Okay, this is an interesting one. Um, So... My first thought is that Robert Dale Owen, who is an American writer, um, is the one that you know recounts this tale that mm-hmm. was told. Um, so I don't know if the person actually exists. 
you know, if that's really a, a situation or if it's just a like some of his writing. No, it's a real story. Okay. I mean, um, I did. I saw another article that talked about they actually interviewed her and she she swore up and down. No, I was in the garden. I was not in the cafeteria or whatever in the room with all the the kids so i, I don't know what to say for there. this it, it, these are really hard to <laughs> what do you say i mean it's from the 1800s you know so it's yeah it's hard. i don't know yeah. I, you know maybe like the writing on the chalkboard could have been some kind of illusion or something like that um mm-hmm. an optical illusion so i'm gonna give it a two just because i can't really debate this this kind of thing i, I wasn't there i didn't see it mm-hmm. there's no pictures that we can refer to and even if there was, it could be a picture of her again. You know, it's like I, <laughs> there's there's too much that could happen there. So what what do you give it? I, I this one is like an eight for me. Eight, like okay. this one with witnesses and all that. I mean, again, we don't have letters from the the kids, you know, or anything that I could find. But um, I don't know. It just seemed really. I, like I said, I've read this before, and when I found it again, I was like, yeah, I got to talk about it because I it. it it's the most extreme version that I've seen of a mm. of a doppelganger where it was so witnessed by people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that, so, I mean, I'm going to give it a two. You, you gave it an eight, you said? I did. Okay. I mean, it's, maybe she has a twin sister she never told anybody about. But how did it appear in the middle of, like, teaching? So, I don't know. I just... I don't know. And hard. I don't know how many people are reporting this. Or was it just... you know? I, I'm like, there's a lot of different questions that I have for this one yeah. that will never get answered because it was way back when. Yes. You know? All right, so my next piece of evidence mm-hmm. is Jeremy Allen White, you know, from The Bear <laughs> and Shameless. Yes. And by the way, if you're sleeping on The Bear, you should not be because that is an awesome show and a great representation of what, like, Chicago's like. Even though it's River North, it reminds me more of the South Side mentality mm, and yeah. stuff. Um, but he looks exactly like Gene Wilder. <laughs> he looks You know, a from lot Willy like Wonka. Him. Yeah. Like, I... There's a striking resemblance between the two that mm-hmm. I would say that they were brothers or something. Yeah, but not doppelgangers to me. Like maybe the not. nose is a little different. Okay. But it is. But but it it is that thing of saying that genetically, there's only so many options, yeah. and so well, like, it's not crazy that people do look alike. Yeah, but what I'm trying to say, the first one was to say maybe. Maybe it's somebody's eyes that are fooling them. Gotcha. This one is maybe these people just look like each other and not related at all. Right. But they just happen to look like each other. Mm-hmm. And then my third piece of evidence is going to seal the deal. Okay. No, I don't, I don't think it will. But, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, my here, I'll give you my third. Then. Okay. Okay. So um, now this one is also um, a more historical piece. Okay. Because um, I just thought that was interesting to go back instead yeah. of yeah, yeah. you know there's a lot again there's a lot of these stories today where it's like you know again I saw I saw thought I saw my sister you know mm-hmm. all right so this is English writer Isaac Walton um, shares a um, an account a disputed account so again not everybody believes the story mm-hmm. um, from uh, John Dunn who was a writer. Um, or poets, I guess, um, and his wife's doppelganger. Mm -hmm. Um, So he wrote a biography of John Donne. Um, So he says, One night in 1612, while staying in Paris, Donne was uh, discovered in a deeply disturbed state. Quote, I have seen a dreadful vision since I saw you. I have seen my dear wife pass twice by me through this room with her hair hanging about her shoulders and a dead child in her arms. Dunn reportedly said to a witness, quote, I cannot be sure that I now live that I have not slept since I saw you and am as sure that at her second appearing, she stopped and looked me in the face and vanished. Walton then claims that a messenger was immediately dispatched to check on Dunn's wife, returning with the news that she was in very poor health after losing their child. Hmm. So again, this is kind of a classic doppelganger where the person is like swears or like, well, I'm seeing seeing you, but like it's almost like they can't quite see the person. Sometimes they'll say like they can't see their face, but they just know that it's this person and that yet they know the person isn't can't be here because they're somewhere else. And then it was a harbinger of like something bad happening yeah. i mean but to me it sounds like a dream like most mm. people don't look alike like how they're supposed to look to me in the in, in a dream mm-hmm. but i just know that they're these people mm-hmm. or they're representatives of these people or something this to me although i i don't believe 
the account. I believe it's an embellishment. Mm -hmm. Um, But, okay. And I'm not trying to say this to be, you know, all like stuck up about stuff or whatever. (laughs) But like, wouldn't this be more like maybe she was sending her energy to him? Mm. And if so, is that a doppelganger? I don't know. We like, that's not clearly defined. And so it's like... For, yeah, as yeah. far as doppelgangers go, I don't believe this at all because mm-hmm. I think it's embellished. Mm-hmm. I, I really do. But could it be something else? I don't know. I don't even think this event happened. <laughs> I'm going to give it a zero. Okay. okay. I'm going to give this one a six. A six. Okay. Yeah. All right. So my last piece of evidence, okay. though, is um, Jennifer Wilson and Kathleen um, Millens, now 76, Um, were adopted at birth by two families in South Yorkshire after their unmarried biological mother decided she could not afford to take care of them. Imagine being a single mother and then you get twins. Mm -hmm. Twins separated at birth. Yeah. So the pair were brought back together in an emotional episode of a long-lost family in 2010 becoming the first twins to be reunited by the ITV show, which I don't know what that is. Uh, Maybe it's Australia or uh, Yorkshire. It's British. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So Jennifer and Kathleen were shocked to discover that they had been living just three miles away from each other the whole entire time. In fact, they shared the same general practitioner. Oh my gosh, come on. Yep. Uh, Kathleen says, it's as if I have always known her, that I have never been without her. It's an unusual bond. It's as if you're one. My life has been changed for the better ever since Jenny and I were finally reunited. And Jennifer adds, I think about Kathleen most days. It's just grown and grown. We never have an argument. Could you imagine? Like, if you lived in that three-mile area, like, you might think, like, oh, I saw you the other day at something, something. And then they're like, no, that wasn't me. Yeah. But yet you just like think it's someone that looks like you, but it turns out to be your twin. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. That's crazy. And imagine how many times people, you know, like said something like, hey, I, I told you to call me and you never called me. You know, and it's and like, I don't know who you are. It's like, or, you know, they're like, <laughs> you never told me. I know, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, right, they right. Told her, they told her twin. I don't, I, just, I don't know how the doctor was it like. Uh, so I have this other patient. I have no idea why. <laughs> I have no idea. Wow, but yeah. I mean, I guess he's not allowed to. No, Maybe probably HIPAA not. Or yeah, right. I, I, I don't have know. no idea. But what I am saying, though, is that it's crazy and these things can happen. And there, mm-hmm. and there could be some biological thing that means that it's not a doppelganger mm-hmm. at all. It's a twin. Yeah. And twins are out there. <laughs> but also, you know, there are cousins that look alike, mm. and it might be a distant cousin. Um, like, look at Patty Duke. You know, <laughs> she had her cousin that looked exactly like her. I mean, do you ever see that show? Yes. She looked exactly like her. Like, I can't. Like, I, I, I don't know. That's just crazy. Um. All right. <laughs> so, what is your overall rating for all this, Rebecca? So, my overall rating, um, for doppelgangers, this is hard for me. I mean, we'll, I'll talk more about it, I suppose, in my closing argument. But, like, is it paranormal? I, you know what? I got to give it a seven. Like, okay. I don't know exactly what it is, right? I don't know if it's someone sending their energy. I don't know if it's a parallel universe, if it's evil, mischievous demons. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I mean, it could be all of these things. But, but you know, if even if you just listen to our past episodes, we have stories that yeah. have, we've we've definitely heard. And, you know, it's not about, um, again, people that have passed. It's about people that are still alive. And yeah. yet somehow they're in a place where they aren't. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I just, I got to give it as far as, is it paranormal? Yeah. It's like, I'm, I'm giving it a seven. All How right. about for you? Uh, I'm going to have to go one. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to have to go one on this one, which is, you know, not a zero. I mean, I'll no, say that. I don't say for you, that's actually, you know, different. And, and it's hard because as I said, I would need, uh, I would need an amazing amount of evidence to prove that this is somehow paranormal mm-hmm. because I don't believe in many poor paranormal things to begin with. <laughs> right. Um, so this would be, this would be a difficult one anyway. So, um, and I, I'm sorry to the listeners that I, you know, can't even con I, the concept doesn't even make sense to to me. Gotcha. Um, but that brings us to our closing our arguments. This is our last chance to convince you to vote our way. We're each given one minute of uninterrupted time. We will time each other on our cell phones. 
because someone cheated a couple of episodes ago, and okay. I just want to put it I out I burst there. out. It, you know, I forgot where what we were doing, and it was just, you know, I had to answer yeah, your question. Yeah, you did. You did, but I have to time you now. I understand. That means that. So, Rebecca, are you ready? <laughs> I am ready. All right, and go. All right. So, as I was saying, I just to me, I feel like there are inst- it, there are paranormal instances of doppelgangers. Like, yes, are there people that look a lot like other people in the world. Yes, that does happen. Um, Even the twins that were within three miles of each other. But if it's a situation where, again, someone is in your home, you know, in your mirror, um, in, in a room and other people see it, you know, like that to me, there's something paranormal about it. Like it's just, I, again, I don't know what it is. Is it a parallel dimension? Is it a time slip? Um, I'm not sure. Um, but you know, I don't, they're either coming to warn you or they're coming to just, you know, be there or again, or is like a, is it a ghost? (laughs) Like, I don't think so. Um, but it's, it's energy. It's something again, I don't have an ex a great explanation because I think we don't know for sure, but it's definitely not natural. Oh, you went a little bit over, but that's okay. I'll, I'll give it to you. Thank you. All right. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay. And go. So for this to happen, we would have to question what life is, actually, you know, and I, I, I don't think we're prepared to have that kind of conversation. But I will tell you of a story that I heard of uh, an actual doppelganger in the real world. Ooh. So there were these, these teenagers and they had to write a report. And so what they did was they went back in time using this phone booth (laughs) and they would get the people like, you know, they would get Napoleon Dynamite, you know, and Bonaparte, (laughs) but they would get other people and they would bring them into this uh, phone booth. But then they saw each other at one time point, the timeline mixed together Mm -hmm. and they said, guess what number I'm thinking of? And they both said 69. That is a real doppelganger. Yeah, so... And I'm done. <laughs> Rebecca cheats again. I it's all right. Well, you 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 might have confused uh, some of our younger listeners yeah. with what you just said. Did you want to explain your argument? Those are true doppelgangers. Bill and Ted, I think, were their names. Okay, so p- look up Bill and Ted if that you That was their excellent adventure that they had. What he's talking about. Did you know what I was talking about? <laughs> of course I okay. did. So I, went- I waited in line twice <laughs> to see that movie. <laughs> uh, so I want to thank everyone so much for listening. Please share us with your friends and family as word of mouth is our best form of advertisement. Uh, remember to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And uh, we have a bunch of people on Patreon that we consider our producers almost. Uh, they are our VIP mm-hmm. patrons. And they are... Alicia, Becky, Ta, Aunt Ernie, Cindy, Kevin, Nicole, Jessica, Alice, Austin, Aaron, Hope, and Candy. Yeah. And on the next episode of Ghostly, I am super excited about this one because I am dying to get into the story and it's about Typhoid Mary. Mm, there's going to be some history there. That's there's a definitely lot of some history. history. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, it comes out on August 23rd. I am so stoked about this one. I. I know that there's some supposed ghostly activity. I don't know um, well, how I much see, there is. I will see what I can find, but it's a creepy story no matter what. It is definitely a creepy story. And it's a story of, you know, um, maybe we should have done this when the pandemic started or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> because it tells you, you know, I mean, you have a responsibility for, you know, the human race. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, until next time, stay ghostly. Bye.